What's up, glue dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter, and I just couldn't bring myself to film from in my craft room because today's one of those beautiful California days that snuck into the middle of the cold days. So I want to take advantage of it. Anyway, I have some really fun, cute little crafts for you today. I have three spring crafts that I created. By changing paint or um, embellishments, you can easily make them glam or any style that you would like. Also, at the very end, I have a bonus little DIY, something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally did. So I've got that for you. Stick with me till the end and you can check that one out too. I hope my fountain doesn't make you feel like you need to pee. Someone told me that last time hearing this running water. Anyway, sorry. Don't forget to check the description box down below if you want to enter to win a cute little bling owl keychain. I do that drawing the first of every month. Also, if you want to follow me on social media, I have an Instagram, that's EP Midnight Crafter, Pinterest, same name, EP Midnight Crafter, or you can join our Facebook group, Midnight Crafter Glue Dots, and you can post your pictures there showing me all the really cool creative crafts that you've come up with. Well, let's get right to these projects and take me inside again. So Dollar Tree has these really great laser cut craft icons, they're called, and they're just various cutout shapes. There's hearts and different bugs and leaves and flowers, and you can choose whatever fits your style. So we're gonna take this craft box, which you also find at Dollar Tree, so I've decided that I wanna use some of my flowers and bugs. Then we're simply gonna be gluing them onto our little box. And for that, I'm just gonna use my hot glue. You can use wood glue if you'd like. That will be actually really good for something like this as well, but I think the hot glue is gonna work just fine. Next, I'm just gonna use some Waverly white chalk paint. You can use any kind of paint that you have and paint right over all of your box and your little critters that you just glued on. I wanna show you a few different options at this point with the paint. So these are painted all the way through, blotted in and kind of shoved into those holes. And we're gonna be doing a little more surface painting on those. This here, the back surface was painted first and then the wood cutout was glued on top. So there's no paint on the wood cutout. And this here, was painted but not shoved down into the little holes. So you can kind of pick which option you like the best. Now that these are dry, I'm gonna use my Waverly Mineral chalk paint. I didn't stir it up very well, but anyway, I'm gonna use a little bit of that, kind of very little and a little drier brush and just go over lightly to give a little bit of that um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of not totally finished paint, just kind of, um, it's not really distressed either, but anyway, I think you guys get the picture. Now, if you do wanna make this somewhat of a glam style, again, it's just gonna depend on the paint that you use. For another project, I had painted these little die cuts in silver, and so those would make really nice additions on here. You could spray this a different color or um, maybe even a silver background or a gold background with silver. It's really up to you. So I have those little pieces done. I'm also gonna do a little bit around the edges of my box, just again, to give a little bit of um, definition and break up some of that overall white that we're seeing. So if you like it like this, you can be done and just leave it like that and put some little things in. I am going to use some of this wired jute cord from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna make a little handle for it. And the reason I chose the wired is because I want my handle to just stay standing up. So I'm gonna measure out a piece that is going to go here as a handle, but I'm going to not just do a single handle, I'm gonna do a little braid. So I do wanna measure out substantially longer. So if I want it to be sticking up this much, I'm gonna pretty much double that. So I'm gonna do three pieces, and you are possibly gonna to need to add a little hot glue here on the ends. So I'm just going to start braiding these. And you can use a little clip on the end if it's easier for you, but I think once you get it going, it's not too bad since this is wired. 
You know, I actually, while I was in the process of braiding this, just changed my mind on how I want to do my handle. This is, <laughs> this happens to me a lot when I'm crafting. So <laughs> I think I want to do so two separate little side handles, which um, I think will just look cute, um, but the functional part of it is that you can still put stuff in the top without having that handle in the way. Okay, I've braided down as far as I could go on that side. I'm going to add a little hot glue to these that unraveled. Originally, I was gonna do my handle um, on the top and I could just cut it shorter to whatever length I want. But now what I think I wanna do is do two little handles on the side. So I'm actually going to figure out where the halfway point is of this, add a little hot glue there so that it doesn't unravel when I cut it, give a bend to my little handles, put them on the inside, or you can throw them on the outside and then maybe put something over to cover those ends. It's up to you. I'm actually gonna put mine on the inside. So I'm just gonna add a little hot glue to each side and attach it right in just like that. All right, I'll create the other one, get that put in. And there we have our cute little box or something to store stuff in. I'm gonna take a little bit of floral foam and put it in here and add some greenery. All I could find in my stash was this ring of floral foam, but usually you can find the pieces which are much more effective for this. I'm taking five of these frames here. I'm gonna be removing these little um, things that hold the backing in, because we don't need those and we don't need the backing. And you can see they've actually um, taped or glued this, this picture right on here. So you can save this for the backing, the little hanger hook thingy if you want to. We don't need it for this particular project though. We are gonna end up using only one of these backings and I'm gonna pull this piece off here because I don't need that on there. And then because I don't want this to show, I'm gonna either spray paint this a solid color or I can just use some kind of chalk paint or something like that to cover it up. Normally, I like to spray paint things, I just find it easier to do um, and it takes less time. It goes on more evenly and dries more quickly. Right now though, it is nighttime and I am cold and I'm not gonna go outside to do that. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and use my chalk paint. This is not gonna show very much, so you don't have it to worry about it being too perfect, but you do want it to look nice because it will show a little bit, just not main focus. It took three coats of paint to cover that black circle. We're gonna use one of our frames and glue this piece back into place. Now, when I painted this, I left the edges unpainted just because it usually helps the glue to adhere a little better if it's not sticking to paint. So I'm gonna use some E6000 as well as some hot glue and get this all glued in and I, it's okay if the glue shows a little bit, but try not to overdo it because you don't want it gooping out everywhere. And I'm just gonna put this right in place to give this a little bit more reinforcement now that it's actually in place. I'm gonna add some hot glue on the back side because this is gonna be the bottom and it won't show. And we, this way, can be completely sure that it will not come apart. 
The next step we're gonna do is take one of these tools called a square. I got that from last time when I couldn't remember the name and so many of you <laughs> told me what it was. And we're gonna place our frames so that they're evenly spaced one inch apart from each other. And then we're gonna be using these dowels. And I got these dowels at Crafters Square, again at Dollar Tree. And what we're gonna be doing is cutting that down to size. So you're gonna make sure that these are spaced one inch apart. But once you get those <laughs> spaced one inch apart, you're going to measure and cut your dowel to that length. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. Well, I think you guys get the idea here. We're gonna cut this dowel, make sure it's touching the bottom of this one and pushed all the way in and that these are spread evenly so you have your full length and then exactly to the edge here of this frame, we'll be cutting down the dowel. Mark and cut your pieces. Now you can either go out with a little saw and cut these. You can use wire cutters, or you can also try using your X-Acto knife. Go ahead and just open up your X-Acto knife and roll back and forth on that cut line that you made until you get it enough to where you can score that. Keep going around, and then at this point, if you want, you can break it off, but it's best if you can get as flat a surface as possible. So cut as far through it as you can with your craft knife or your X-Acto knife. I've got it pretty well scored through here, and I'm just gonna snap it off right at that point. And you can see we've got a pretty good clean cut with a couple little things sticking up. We'll just cut those off, and then I'm gonna cut four of these, as I said. The length of this dowel with the frames that I have used is seven and five eighths. And so I have four of those dowels cut to that size. I'm gonna start by putting my first frame in place against this back of the square here. And then what we will be doing is spacing these exactly an inch apart. But because I once I get those in place, I will not be able to show you I'm gonna be using my E6000 and I'm gonna be putting a little bit in the corner of each one of my frames because once we get all the frames in place, we're gonna be putting our dowel in place just like that. So let's get doing that and I'm gonna show you what I mean. And I'm gonna place my next frame facing the same direction. I'm also gonna put my glue in that inner corner so I'm putting glue on each one of my inner corners to have them ready. And you can actually do that on both of these bottom sides while before they're all glued together. It just will make it a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna start with my spacing and then check one inch in between, place another frame, then one inch from that I'll place my next one and so on. Now we're gonna take one of the dowels and place it right in that corner, all the way hitting this bottom part, all the way up to the top. This top piece should not, this top, top piece of dowel should not stick up. And then we'll put the other dowel in the other bottom corner. And then I'm gonna just flip my square over to this side to make sure that they are also evenly spaced on this side as well. Then we're gonna to need to let this dry really, really well, and we're going to be doing the same thing once this dries. We're gonna flip it over so we can put our other two dowels in these upper inside corners, like that. And it's overnight and this has dried. And the next step that I'm gonna do is go out and spray paint this all white. Now we're gonna start working on the handles for our really cool lantern. I'm gonna be using this twine from Dollar Tree and scissors. And if you'd like, a ruler. So I'm gonna cut a piece, two pieces of twine about 13 inches long. And then I'm gonna cut two pieces of twine about eight inches long. 
And then I'm going to wrap this twine around my fingers and I'm doing four fingers because I want my tassel to be a little bit longer and we're also going to be trimming it. And wrap it around several times depending on how big you want your tassel to be or how full I should say. And I usually like to do around six strands. So I started with the strand here and I'm ending with the strand here so that they'll both be down at the bottom there. And I'm also going to do that twice. Now I'm going to take one of my 13 inch strands and pass it through the top of my loop here. Make sure that my little ends are down there at the bottom. Line up these two ends here at the top so that they're even. And then we're going to tie a knot a little higher up on our piece here so that we have tails that will go down into the tassel part and not really show. They're going to blend right in there. So we're trying to make this as streamlined as possible without having a bunch of extra knots and things showing that we don't really want. Then take that and turn it so that the knot part is underneath in hidden inside of all of the tassel pieces. This just gives a much cleaner, nicer look. Now you're going to take your 8 inch piece and you're going to put it so that the piece goes about halfway down your tassel pieces and then make a little loop at the upper part. Hold that down and then start wrapping around with your long part over that loop as if you're trying to cover it, but don't. <laughs> Once you get about four times around and you have the little tail and you have your loop here, you're going to put that tail through the loop just like that and we're going to pull our short strand that we originally left here and that will start pulling the tail right inside of all that wrapping that we just did. You don't want to pull it too hard that you pull it all the way through, but you do want to pull it so that it goes underneath these other little strands. Now that piece that you had halfway and you've pulled is now as long as your other ones. You may have this extra little piece that didn't get completely hidden inside, but you can just cut that excess right off and you have a really nice little tassel here. We're just going to cut these ends so that there are no longer loops. And then to give a fuller look to your tassel, we're just going to go through and untwist each of these little strands of twine. And each of them is like three little individual pieces. So it's going to give a really cool full look to the tassel. Once you have that completely done, then you can trim just to give it a nice look. And then we're going to put those to the side for a minute and we're going to use some of this floral wire from Dollar Tree and make a piece that is a long enough handle, whatever length handle you would like on your lantern. Cut your piece and then just using a pliers, we're going to take and create a bend just like that on the end. Okay, so let's bring our lantern back since it's all nice and dry now. Now we're going to take the tassels that we made. So the tassel goes on the outside and you go from the top, pass that under that first rung there of our lantern, and then pass it through the loop. Now, depending on how much loop you left will depend on how long your piece will how long this will be here for you to hook your wire to. So mine is pretty small. If you find that yours is too long, you can take and tie a knot up at the top, which will um, then shorten, you know, and you can make your little loop small and then, but with the length I have, I don't have extra space for that. I'm going to do the same thing on my other one, other side. And the last thing to do is to just hook our wire inside each of the loops and tighten that shut so it doesn't slide out again. 
And there you have a really cute little handle with your tassels on the side. If you wanna add in extra tassels, you can do that. Now you know how to make them. And I'm gonna show you this stylized too. What do you guys think? Has this been fun? Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and join our Glue Dot family. For this next DIY, I'm gonna be using one of these really cute little jars. It's so cute in pink, but I'm actually gonna change it and <laughs> cover it with my Waverly white chalk paint. And I'm gonna be doing that and then distressing a little bit with some sandpaper so we will be seeing some of that pink come through. First, I'm gonna get this label off using my heat gun because that seems to be the easiest way to get it off. And then if there's any residual, sticker goo on there. I usually like to use alcohol, a little rubbing alcohol to get that off. While you're at it, you could wipe down the outside of the jar with your rubbing alcohol because that'll just give you a nicer, cleaner surface for your paint to adhere to. So any fingerprints or anything will be taken off. Then we're just going to go back in there with the, I'm just using the foam brush on this one and go and you can use anything, a paintbrush, anything that works well. This time I'm making this more of like a farmhouse version, but you can also, depending on what colors you paint this and what kind of embellishments you use, you can make this a glam version as well. Honestly, I think a paintbrush would probably work easier. Yes, it most definitely does. <laughs> I was gonna give this a second coat, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And in that case, the next step I'm gonna do is just take a piece of sandpaper, which is also from Dollar Tree, and just give a light scraping to the surface so all that raised part will start to show through. Now, if you don't wanna do this, you can do two coats of paint and not do any of this um, quote unquote distressing, it's up to you but it kind of gives a nice effect. And also some of that pink jar shows through, which is kind of cute. At this point, if you're concerned about the finish staying as it is, you can give it a coat of Mod Podge and there's the matte Mod Podge that wouldn't change the color too much. So again, that's an option. The next thing I'm gonna do is take some of my jute twine here and I'm gonna make a little hanging thing for this as well. So. I'm gonna be braiding. So I'm gonna cut several strands at the length that I want. So I have nine strands and I'm gonna divide those into groupings of three. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the ends to hold the strands together. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier. We're going to start braiding this all the way down and I'm just gonna do it loosely I'm gonna kind of try and keep my three strands a little more flat just to give a bigger handle. When you get to the end, add a little bit of hot glue to keep everything together. And don't worry because this is going to be covered up. You don't have to worry about that showing. I'm adding it to the front and the back side just to hold that from unraveling. So here we have our little piece. And we're gonna be putting this over to the sides here like this and gluing that down. I'm gonna do it in line with where the seam of my jar is and in that little flat part. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of E6000 as well as my hot glue just to make sure that that stays in place because it would kind of be a drag if that came apart. Here's what we've got so far. And what we're gonna do now is take our twine here and we're gonna be wrapping it several times around the jar in that area to cover over that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue to get this started so it makes it a little easier to wrap. And wrap it really tight. Make sure it covers both sides of the handle. 
And this is also going to ensure that we don't have the other pieces. Even if the glue gives out, at least we have this really trying to help hold it into place. Now our finishing touch is going to be to choose from these laser cut craft icons. But I think since we're doing spring, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these little uh, ladybugs in here. Those are pretty cute and they will look really good on our project. Plus kind of the nice thing is um, it has these little things that we can pass our string through or our twine through so to help hold it on. I'm gonna take a piece that will go around and leave enough to tie a bow. And then I'm also gonna take a little piece to pass through my little person here, my little character person. It's a ladybug. <laughs> For this, I just need a small piece to make a loop to hang it from. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue and attach it just about there. And then I'm gonna tie my bow around here. Another cute thing to add on here would maybe be a little bit of some florals, maybe to pick up the pink that's in, if you've got the pink jar, that would look very springy as well. And I've got some little flowers next to me, so I think I might do that. And here we have another finished little project. Project I created because I needed to solve this problem. It seemed like I would always have the dishwasher with clean dishes and as I'd remove stuff from it my family thought it was dirty because I didn't see it full so then they would pile dirty dishes in with the clean ones. So this is what I created. This is just a quick little bonus DIY, something I have really wanted to show you guys for a long time, and I don't know, I don't know, I kept forgetting about it, I guess. What we're gonna be using is these tumbling tower blocks, and we're gonna glue together uh, four of them, just like this. And I'm doing two different sets. I'm gonna show you a glam version and a farmhouse version. So depending on your style, you can kind of pick what you prefer. Now, I'm gonna use hot glue for this, and you gotta work quickly too because you don't want it to cool off and leave much space in between. And don't worry if you get the one that has the words on it, this is gonna get covered up. Next, I'm gonna be using these giant craft sticks that I got from Walmart. They're super useful and they're super big. <laughs> so what I'm just gonna do with these is put my piece on top here and trace it and just cut it to the length of our blocks. Okay, next we're just gonna be hot gluing these pieces onto the little blocks that we glued together so that we can form a much nicer thing without all the other seams and everything showing. Now if you have wood glue that you wanna use, that would be probably the best option. Um, I can't find my wood glue for the life of me, so I'm just gonna use hot glue, but you do need to work fast if you use hot glue. And I'm gonna glue one piece on each side. This is what your piece should look like. Now if you have any little bit, like I have a very little bit hanging off over the edge here, you can cut that off with the scissors. The reason I used the X-Acto knife when I was initially um, cutting these is because a lot of times it cracks the sticks because of whatever curve and that, and it just breaks them. But once they're glued on to these blocks, you can trim off any excess and it, it works really nicely. It ends up really flush with your piece of wood. Next, I'm just gonna paint my piece with my Waverly white chalk paint. So paint all sides of your block. The paint is good and dry now, and I've painted all sides of this, and we're gonna do the fun part now. So I have these really great rub-on transfers that I got from Dollar Tree. There's all different styles of letters. Uh, I'm gonna use these for the glam one, which they're gold, and I'm gonna use these black ones for my more farmhouse rustic version. And what we're gonna be doing is putting the word clean on one side and dirty on the other. 
such a great way to solve this problem. <laughs> So be a little bit careful with these because these letters, I don't know if you've used them yet or not, they're a little bit sticky on the back, which is what makes them stick nicely to whatever surface you put them on. But you also have to be careful that when you're cutting them out, they don't stick to your fingers and you pull the, that lettering off that <laughs> you want to put onto your project. So once you get these lined up the way you want them, you're then going to press them down into place and then just use anything to scrape them down with. Now if you have a Silhouette or a Cricut or any of those fun machines, you can use those. But I think this looks great and it's smooth and then I'm just going to give this a coat of Mod Podge to seal it once I am all done with that. Now I find these gold ones to actually, you can cut them on the paper. They're stuck more to this backing than the other ones were. So that makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about them sticking to your fingers, but just an FYI. Now here's the next part where you get to be creative and decorate these the way you want. So this is gonna be my more farmhouse version and for this I'm gonna be using some twine. Um, you need to make the part that hangs so you are gonna want that. But also, because these sides are so wide, you wanna maybe cover those up. So if you wanna put some kind of ribbon on there that's about that width, there's plenty of different ones from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to sort of play with this a little bit. And I find that E6000 is really, for the long term, it is a better hold for this type of thing because I've made this before for my own house and I initially used the hot glue. It didn't stick really as well. So I'm gonna just go with the, um, with the E6000 for mine. So I have the two rows going around like this on the bottom. And then for the hook, I'm just gonna do that from the center here up and over and to this other side. So pretty simple. Now the reason I'm not doubling up on this is because what I have found with ours at home is you want this hangy part to be pretty thin. Otherwise it's really hard to hook onto the little hanger that you're gonna put onto your dishwasher. So for my glam one, I'm going to use some of this grow grain ri 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 ribbon. <laughs> I'm going to use some of this grow grain ribbon that I have <laughs> and run it up and over and around the sides and underneath. So let's see, I think I'm just going to start halfway under here and then this way the seam won't show either. And again, I'm going to use just a little dot of my hot glue to hold things initially in place, but I don't overlap it onto the E6000 because it just doesn't stick over that. I feel like this farmhouse version one is a little too plain for my liking, so I'm just gonna go and, and do like, make just a little design around the edge. So you don't have to do this, you can kinda do whatever you like, but I just wanted to add a little bit something to it. 